Hi. I'm Lone Candle. What the hell is going on at the border? What and who caused this influx of migrants? I've got a story to tell. It starts with shit going on in the Central American Northern Triangle countries of El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras. Then we gotta talk about seasonal migration patterns, followed by Trump and COVID restrictions, and finally, the coming of Biden. Why people would want to immigrate to the United States in the first place is called push factors. Factors pushing people to the border. A first general factor is these countries are poorer. Poorer countries have less work opportunities, so it's tougher to support oneself and one's family. A country's economic output per person is measured as GDP per capita. In 2019, that of Honduras, El Salvador, and Guatemala ranged from 2,500 to 4,600. Compare that to Mexico, whose GDP per capita is a relatively whopping 9,900. These countries make Mexico look rich. People from all of these places have a much better shot at supporting themselves and their families if they can make it to the United States that has a GDP per capita of 65200 Despite the low pay and tough working conditions that many poor immigrants face, these jobs help them support themselves because of how weak the economies of their home countries are. The economic differential is a huge push factor causing people to migrate, but it isn't the only one. These countries have major problems with gang extortion and violence. Some migrants are fleeing for their lives. If you look at homicide rates for every country in the world, El Salvador, Honduras, and Guatemala are all in the top five. El Salvador is number one in the world at 56.7 homicides per 100,000 people, and Guatemala is number five at 36.6. The United States isn't great at homicides relative to its peers, but is much lower than these countries at 6.1 homicides per 100,000 people. Another factor, late in 2020, two record-breaking hurricanes hit these countries. It's bad enough when a wealthy country gets hit by back-to-back -back hurricanes, but the rest of that wealthy country can rally around and support the hit region. These poor countries don't have such wealth. Their recoveries have been slow, making bad situations worse, even exacerbating poor access to clean water, and pushing more people to decide that their best option is risking the dangerous trip north. Finally, COVID-19 has worsened inequalities in the Northern Triangle. Okay, we have a lot of powerful factors pushing people north, and two of them, COVID and the hurricanes, happened relatively recently. So these are new forces at play. Still, administration policies, the perception of administration policies, and the perceptions of the president play a role. When Donald Trump was first elected president, there was a drop in migration. This was likely a Trump effect in that potential migrants' perceptions were that they wouldn't be able to get through the border with Trump guarding it. So, it was better to wait or not try at all. However, migrants found out that the border was still leaky and high levels of migration returned. The Trump administration went into overdrive to curtail this migration, creating deals with Mexico to help enforce its borders, deals with the Northern Triangle countries, the Remain in Mexico policy, where those applying for asylum would have to wait in Mexico rather than wait in the United States for their asylum cases to be processed, metering, where tight limits were put on the number of people allowed to approach ports of entry to ask for asylum, 
and making it more difficult for migrants to be fully processed for asylum by raising the bar of what counts as a credible fear. On the heels of this came COVID-19. Under a policy called Title 42, the Trump administration started returning all migrants to Mexico instantly, rather than processing them. This was done supposedly as necessary precautions to limit the inbound spread of COVID-19 and its spread in holding facilities, although officials in the bureaucracy apparently didn't think it was necessary and their objections had to be overridden. So, what we have here is a growing, massive buildup of migrants in Mexico waiting at the border. Some are waiting for their asylum cases, others were returned straight to the Mexican border rather than brought back to their home countries because of the COVID order. This increases the number of repeat crosses. Many statistics you see for the huge number of border crosses isn't a count of how many migrants have illegally crossed the border, but a count of apprehensions. These double count, triple count, and more count those that try to cross multiple times. And because we have been returning crossers directly to the border rather than processing them, it is easier for them to try again and again. The January recidivism rate was 38%, 31 percentage points higher than the 7% it was in 2019. This rate was still 38% in May 2021. We also have a buildup of people in sending in other countries because of the perception that Trump policies are harsh and that future Democratic policies will one day be nicer. Decades of research has found that often tough border enforcement just delays migration or changes migration routes, rather than permanently suppressing it. So, although Trump had his own surge of migration in 2019, his migration tightening and COVID policies combined with potential migrants' perceptions of him created a lot of pent-up demand at the border as well as in sending countries. Immigration across the southern border doesn't happen evenly across the year. There are fairly consistent patterns. This makes month-to-month -month comparisons difficult because a big drop or jump in month-to-month -month migration numbers may be simply due to seasonal changes. If you look at a chart of cumulative border apprehensions from 2012 to 2020, where the apprehensions are all summed up by month, you'll see January is generally a low point, with a rise of levels peaking in May, then falling to a middle point in July, where there aren't huge gains or drops until we get back to January. Well, guess what? The current jump in cases are from January to February and February to March, right when we'd expect a big rise. From March to April, the current numbers only increased a little bit, just like they normally do from March to April. And from April to May, the numbers were pretty flat, even though historically there is often a jump from April to May. Unfortunately, we can't compare well to 2020 because of the COVID pandemic. But comparing to 2019, another high year for migration, the patterns for 2021 follow the trend of 2019. Meaning, some of the jump in migration has nothing to do with policies or who's president, and simply to do with regular month-to-month -month patterns that we see most years. Now, what we are seeing this year is over and above those patterns. So, there is definitely something else going on. But if you don't take the seasonal shifts into account, you'll greatly exaggerate the jump in migration. Okay, so thus far, we've understood general factors that push people from south of the border to the United States including two hurricanes, which could have made 2021 a high migration year on their own. We've also covered how Trump's tough policies and COVID policies kept people out by making them wait in Mexico and dropping them off at the border without processing them to their home countries. Even other countries' border closings backed up some migration flows. 
This means we have pent-up migration waiting for us at the border and in sending countries. Additionally, we're turning people directly to the border due to COVID protocols rather than processing them makes it easier for people to cross multiple times, inflating migration numbers. Furthermore, Biden took office on January 20th, right when seasonal rises in migration normally start. Thus, there are a lot of factors that have nothing to do with Biden pushing migration higher. However, the level of increase and in evidence from on the ground make clear that Biden is also a factor. I'll split the Biden effect into two related mechanisms, perceptions and policy. People from the Northern Triangle and Mexico understood that Donald Trump was tough on immigrants. They also understood that Joe Biden was going to be less so. This perception alone caused some hopeful people to try to migrate. This was just as much a Trump gone effect as a Biden effect. People were relieved at Trump leaving office and jumped for joy at the possibility of entering the U.S. Despite all the criticism Biden is getting for this, I'm not sure he could have done anything about it. It's not like Biden was claiming the borders were opening. He has specifically told potential migrants to not come and even advertised on radio, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube all over South America, telling people that the border is closed. Administration officials have also said, don't come, in both Spanish and English. However, the opposite impression was already in migrant and potential migrant communities. Friends, neighbors, and family were saying now is the time to go. So people came. The only way Biden could have prevented a Biden effect was to speak on immigration during the campaign and as president, just like Donald Trump did. Of course, Biden disagrees with a lot of Trump policies and the way he spoke of illegal immigrants. So that wasn't really an option for him. In other words, the only way to prevent a Biden migration bump was to continue the Trump effect, which wasn't really possible for Biden. Much of the criticism from the right on Biden opening the borders and being too soft just isn't based on reality. A jump in migration was inevitable due to the common perceptions of the two presidents in potential migrant communities. Immigration coyotes weren't helping when they lied to people, telling them that the border was more open than it actually was. These smugglers were telling people it'd be easier to get into the United States even before Biden was in office. Biden's policies shouldn't have made people think the border was open. He actually maintained the COVID-19 policy that quickly returns people to the border. Although Biden is changing a plethora of policies, none of them are opening the borders or should reasonably induce people to surge to the United States. But the actual details of the policies isn't what caused the migration increase. The perception of a nicer and more open president did. Let's fly through Biden's immigration changes in his first few months in office. The Department of Homeland Security, DHS, announced a withdrawal of the Affidavit of Support proposed rule that would have increased the evidence and costs necessary to sponsor an immigrant. DHS removed the public charge regulations that made it harder for people to stay in the country if they might be a public charge due to using some form of welfare at some time. The administration reverted to the 2008 civics test that naturalizing immigrants took, rather than the more difficult one that Trump put in place. The Johnson memo set the priorities for removing illegal immigrants from the country, focusing more on people who are national security threats caught at the border or have arrived recently, felony perpetrators, or gang participants. Trump had casted a wider net for removal. The Biden administration is expanding the refugee admissions cap, removing excessive vetting, attempting to improve the process, expanding refugee adjudication capacity, granting more access to certain vulnerable categories, and reviewing the special immigrant visa program for Iraqis and Syrians. Biden suspended new entrants to the Migrant Protection Protocols, which is the official name of the Remain in Mexico policy. 
for those already in the program, the Biden administration will have them wait in Mexico to be processed. It should be noted, Biden is still enforcing the Title 42 COVID policy, so he's still returning most migrants to Mexico. Homeland Security has created a Family Reunification Task Force to try uniting the remaining children separated by the Trump administration. Biden has also ended the long-term detention of families and also restarted a program to allow for a review of arrests, detentions, and intended removals. Biden revoked Trump's Buy American and Hire American executive order, which was used to add immigration-restricting policies. The Justice Department rescinded Trump's zero-tolerance memo, which was used to create family separations. Instead of zero-tolerance, prosecutors are told to act based on the merits of each case. For the most part, the government hasn't been prosecuting families under zero tolerance since 2018. And under COVID policy, the Trump administration was mostly just returning migrants to Mexico without prosecution. Certain H-2A and H-2B travelers may qualify for national interest exceptions. The Biden administration tried to place a moratorium on all removals for 100 days, but a court put a stop to that order. Biden released a memo ordering the administration to preserve and fortify DACA. Biden stopped the construction of the border wall. He revoked the travel ban on several Muslim, Arab, and African countries that Trump instituted after courts rejected his attempt to have a more comprehensive Muslim ban. Biden ended a ban on immigrant visas to those who are not spouses or minor children of U.S. citizens or specific investors. And he restarted the Central American Minors Program that lets Central American children with lawful U.S. resident parents to be let in as refugees or paroled into the country. Biden has made Venezuelan and Burmese immigrants eligible for temporary protected status, giving them temporary permission to live and work in the United States. He revoked an executive order that tried to punish sanctuary cities, and he will again include undocumented immigrants in census counts. Biden removed a Trump order that sought consent from states and localities for refugee settlement, and he is reviewing whether to lower or remove fees for asylum applications. Biden reached an agreement with Mexico for Mexico to help contain migrants in exchange for AstraZeneca coronavirus vaccines. Mexico is taking more Central American families expelled under Title 42 and closing their southern border to non-essential travel. Biden has declared that he wants to work with migrant sending countries to solve the root causes. A real effect of policy change is a 60% decrease in monthly ICE arrests. As far as proposals that are unlikely to pass, Biden wants to allow more immigrants legally into the country while also giving a pathway to legal status and even citizenship to millions living in the country illegally. Do migrants understand these nuanced and detailed policy changes? Did a deep understanding of them convince more people to migrate? No. People migrated because of their false perception that Biden would let them in, even though that was never his platform and not what he communicated. Of course, migrants who understand these policies may realize that they have a better chance of getting in and not being forcibly removed, but it is the general perception that matters more than the specifics of his policies. My main point here is there are no loose open border policies being put in place or even proposed. There are softer policies than Trump had, but people are still being deported and the border still isn't open for those who don't come legally. The Biden influx is more based on perception than the specifics of actual policies. I do have to mitigate my point by noting that about a third of families entering illegally have not been expelled. This does send a mixed message and gives people the incentive to cross illegally because there's always a chance of being allowed to stay while their claims are being processed. Without knowing why the administration is letting some people in and not others, people are incentivized to take the chance. An additional reason to doubt the strength of a special Biden effect is that out-of-season migration increases started back in October, before Biden was president, 
and before he was even elected. That migrants perceived their chances as better under Biden has been attested to by several interviews of migrants. They thought Biden would let them stay, but they were misinformed and therefore sent back. Based on some of these interviews, it seems like some migrants have really gotten their hopes up due to Biden. That's sad. Sad because these are false hopes. And sad because nothing Biden did should have given them that much hope. Smugglers have lied to people, telling them they could get across now. But they are usually returned in disappointment. One woman wailed while being sent back across the border. Biden promised us! But he did not. One migrant said he joined a migrant caravan as soon as Biden won. He didn't cite policy or a piece of rhetoric, just that Biden won the election. On December 29th, before Biden was president, before any policies could possibly be put into effect, but after he won the election, about 400 migrants forced their way past Mexican officials and toward El Paso, Texas, across the Paso del Norte Bridge. U.S. Customs and Border Protection officers stopped them in riot gear while the migrants chanted, Biden! Biden! They were trying to cross illegally, in mass, chanting Biden's name. His policies couldn't be doing it because he wasn't president yet. Biden's rhetoric didn't suggest migrants should do such a thing. But desperation and the optimism for a president nicer than Trump on immigration gave these people the hope that they could be let into the United States. Unfortunately for them, that hope was misplaced. If migrants were so misinformed to think Biden could let them in before he was even president, it is no surprise that they continue to be misinformed about what Biden intends to do or is doing as president. When people are this confused and desperate, there is little Biden can do to prevent their false beliefs and misguided actions. Unless he believes in the same harsh rhetoric and policies that Trump took. And even that didn't stop the 2019 migration surge, nor did it stop throngs of migrants from waiting to get in near the Mexican border while living in poor conditions. To avoid speaking too strongly, the migrants aren't 100% wrong. It is, and will be, easier to get in and stay in the country under Biden than Trump. But not that much easier. And they never realistically should have thought it would be. Thus far, I've talked about migration in general, not the thousands of unaccompanied children crossing the border. While this influx is partly due to the reasons already discussed, there are particular causes to this change in the migration mix. The main cause is that Biden chose to follow a court ruling that is currently stayed on appeal that said, the United States must allow unaccompanied children into the United States while we process their claims. Families stuck at the border figured this out and started sending just their children across, usually teenaged males. This makes it look like there is an unusual influx of children, when in reality, they are just coming by themselves rather than with a family. The total amount of children trying to enter the country is the same. If we compare February and March 2019 to February and March 2021, on the number of child arrests made by the Border Patrol of Central American children, we see that the total number of children arrested isn't much different. However, in 2021, many more are coming without family members. This is because, currently, families are often returned to the border, while unaccompanied children are let in while their claims are processed. This particular difference can be blamed on policy combined with families being so desperate for a better life that they would send their children across the border on their own. The Biden administration is telling migrants not to come, but in practice is housing, clothing, and feeding unaccompanied children under 18, 
which gives a clear incentive to send such people. The Biden administration didn't appear to expect the wave of children and weren't ready to deal with the influx. They were overwhelmed at first, but by May seemed to be processing the children more quickly to more humane living arrangements. Although, there were reports of continued overcrowding, filthy conditions, and lack of basic supplies and medical care as employees weren't staffed or trained for this. Fortunately, the total numbers in April and May were leveling off, and the flow of minors slowed. So hopefully, the Biden administration can humanely process all these children. In May, the average daily number of children in Customs and Border Protection's custody was 640. It was 2,895 in April. In April, unaccompanied children each spent 92 hours in this custody, compared to 26 hours in May. Many of the children are being united with family that they have in the United States. However, more are still held by Health and Human Services in facilities around the country. Another factor is a Mexican law passed in November 2020 forbidding the placement of minors and families in immigrant detention. Thus, Mexican agents focused on single adults, allowing a higher percentage of families and children to get through Mexico. In September 2020, the share of families reaching the U.S. border was 53%. By March 2021, that number was 92%. While the current immigration numbers have reached new highs, the situation is not unique. This is the fourth time that we've seen a large increase in unaccompanied children or family migration since 2014. In 2014, Obama was also faced with a surge of Central American minors at the border. To help limit this, he created a program that allowed people to apply for asylum while located in their home countries. 13,000 did so. Trump canceled this program. So, did Biden's foolish policies allow a massive surge of migrants? No. Biden's role in total migration numbers is the perception of him being more open than Trump, which there wasn't anything he could do about. On the influx of unaccompanied children, Biden policy did at least partially cause this because, by taking unaccompanied children into the country to process their claims, while at the same time returning families to the border, he created an incentive for desperate people to send their children alone. However, much of the jump in numbers isn't the result of Biden coming or Trump leaving. The numbers follow seasonal patterns of migration. Seeing huge month-to-month jumps is misleading because it ignores that there are usually huge month-to-month jumps at this time of year. Comparing to 2020 is misleading because COVID-19 made it a suppressed year. The best comparison is to 2019, where we see migration following the same seasonal patterns under Trump. The elevation above those numbers is likely caused by pent-up demand due to Trump and COVID restrictions keeping people out and at the Mexican border. People crossing multiple times because they're sent directly to the border rather than being fully processed due to COVID protocols. Push factors like two record-breaking hurricanes and COVID, as well as the perception that Biden would be nicer to migrants. As far as criticisms of Biden go, This has nothing to do with open border policies because Biden doesn't have open border policies. This has nothing to do with Biden advertising himself as opening the borders because he has been doing the opposite. Big general criticisms that blame this surge on Biden are nonsense. Criticisms more focused on removing remain in Mexico or on allowing unaccompanied children across the border but not families may be valid. But these policy changes didn't cause the current surge in migration. I'm Lone Candle. Like me, comment me, love me.
All right, Ooh, I got a hat on.